Uh, hey, I'm Harry. Uh, I co-own Blink Arena. Uh, born and raised in the Isle of Man uh, with my longtime friend uh, Leon. We run Blink Arena, the esports and gaming centre in the heart of Douglas. So just tell us, like, where did the idea come from? Uh, well, so me and Leon, during the early pandemic, we got involved with doing Counter-Strike esports tournaments. Uh, we got some really good turnout for that, about 60 players in one of our biggest events uh, called Boosted. Um, that was around, I'm trying to say, probably early 21, I want to say, if I remember correctly. Uh, but we had casters from the UK doing casting for us. We were observing highlights, TikToks, the whole shebang, like you would do with a proper big esports tournament for something like ESL or any, again, if you know about the esports, you know the, the sort of the biggest tournaments out there. We were trying the hardest to replicate it. And essentially, we were going to be going full tilt. We have our own company for the tournaments called uh, the Isle of Man Esports League. And that was going to be what we were going to run with. We were going to be doing regular tournaments, get companies in for corporate events, all of this sort of stuff. And then as a stroke of luck in the middle of summer of 21, uh, my partner Leon contacted the uh, just a local landlord who was looking to uh, move a little bit of space and get someone in for him. I'm like, okay, yeah, cool. Give him a message. Within an hour, he's like, yeah, uh, could you come down? I want to meet you. We meet him. And within literally an hour of talking, an hour of seeing the place, we were like, yeah, we're ready to go. Because we knew that if we didn't take this opportunity to build up a place for people who are passionate about, people about esports or about PC gaming or even casual gaming and VR, then it's, it's sort of like we're missing the opportunity to provide something that we didn't have. And it makes us feel, again, I feel like it's like a responsibility thing. It's like, we have the opportunity to do this. Let's do it. And so now here we are with our 10 gaming PCs all fitted out for esports, for doing watch parties and all sorts of things, part, even corporate events and just coming down and chilling with your mates. It's all sort of covering the gamut all in one now that we have the space. And it's been an inspiring journey coming this far, along with sort of... <laughs> Along with, a, I'm sure, a pretty funny anecdotes along the way that will tell when uh, me and Leon aren't so, uh, <laughs> aren't so attached to the place, so so to say. But yeah, it's just been a it's been a compounding set of ideas that have now come to fruition, and we're not stopping there. We do have a lot of plans for the future. So you say about like um, the corporate events and the put the ten computers so you can even do like, you know the, the teams or individuals on that. How for someone like me who doesn't like my experience of playing online is basically years ago on COD. How does that sort of translate now? What's that like? It's, I'd like to say it's a different world, but it, it isn't. It's still a bunch of guys just playing games, even though they are being paid six-figure salaries now, and it's like, oh, that's kind of unreal. But it's just a group of guys playing at the highest level of you know these games that are made specifically for it, doing all sorts of, whether it be a shooter, it'll be even taking things like chess. Chess had a massive explosion in the early sort of, COVID era, and that blew up massively just as a digital e-sport. And uh, that saw millions of people watching just even, uh, popular influencers to the best players in the world all scrapping in the same tournaments. And it's sort of, the best way to describe e-sports is just a bunch of guys playing games, just like you would anyone else would watch or play in a football league, but it's just on a different medium. There's like no no real difference. It's just people who are passionate about something and playing it to the highest level, competing in it and wanting to be the best. And it's as simple as that. There's no thing about saying, oh, are people in esports real athletes or whatever? It doesn't matter. Literally does not matter. It's a, it, the people, if they are playing the games and they're enjoying it and they're succeeding in what they're doing, it doesn't matter if they're specifically caveated as athletes or sports people. Who cares? Just about what, what you guys have on offer. We obviously, uh, with the computers you've got in there, you've got, like, we're showing it here, we've got some fantastic, like, range of games mm -hmm. on it. What's, so what's, what's proven popular for people, really? Uh, for us, it has been the big titles. Uh, you've seen a lot of Counter-Strike, which is arguably one of, it's a top three BC sport. League of Legends has been super popular, uh, Rainbow Six Siege, which, to, which was actually a surprise to me. I'm super into the esports thing, and I've seen Rainbow Six sort of die down over the years, but it's now coming back with an absolute resurgence, um, which it's just great. Oh, I can't get my head over. It. I can't get my head into the game anymore. It's been a long, long time, but it's definitely been the it's definitely been the competitive games for the. I definitely say the more mature, older players that are coming in because they being more invested in the game is sort of what makes it enjoyable for them. 
climbing up lad the ladder of ranks and all of that. But when you get the younger kids in, you see them playing absolutely everything. You've got the classics from Fortnite and Roblox to playing things like Golf of Friends or um, Don't Starve, Portal. These absolutely amazing games that we put like I played ten years ago, and now the new generation who were born ten years ago are now playing these games. You know, Half Life. It, it, it's just. It's really humbling to see that people are still enjoying these games that you know haven't been in the zeitgeist for probably over fifteen years. We've spotted a stack of Domino's boxes, so, <laughs> so there's, there's the evidence side of that as well. To it's uh, it, it, again, all of that's managed. All of it's just you come in, do you want food? Again, we obviously don't give the option. If you want to self cater, bring your own stuff in. If you want to decorate, crack on. The walls are black. You can put whatever you want onto them. Uh, but it's just giving you the options because obviously we're in where we are. We've got KFC, McDonald's. Obviously, Domino's is just over the road. So it's all just a hub. If you want to get anything, you can do it. It's just we have a little deal with uh, Domino's that allows us to get you some a, a good deal on for pizzas. And obviously, I think when it comes to especially younger kids, pizza pizza is king. Really, let's be honest. So just uh, just talk about the, the VR setup because you got obviously we've seen the computers and yeah, yeah, we've seen yeah. what's on here, but you've also got the VR room. Mm -hmm. uh, what is that? That's, so, that's more your sort of thing. Yeah, it's my so it's my bread and butter. I've spent thousands and thousands of hours in VR. I'm doing development for it, playing in it. It's just it's what I've evolved my life over about five six years. You do a degree in it as well. Um, so the setup we have here is called the Valve Index, which is essentially probably one of the highest fidelity quality VR headsets out there. It is a wired headset, but what that comes with is um, this sort of true motion tracking and it comes with these sort of knuckle controllers that individually track your fingers. They're proper weird things. It straps to your hands, so in VR we've always had a problem, like in the earlier, like Oculus, uh, the Oculus, not Quest as such, but even like Oculus V1, V2 dev kits from early 2012, the worst thing was trying to throw something. If you pick something up, you threw it, and you'd be like, ah, my controller's now across the room, it's hit the TV, it's hit grandma, and it's like, oh, great. So now they just trap your hands and it's just this weird feeling that you're, far, you're slowly getting into this world of like, I could probably stay in this for like tens of hours and not know I've really left anywhere. It's like, it's a, a completely immersive experience. It's, 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 again, it's super hard to explain because VR is coming up and up now with the meta, the meta quests and all of that becoming way more accessible. But the quality of some of the games on there, Half-Life Alex and things like Pavlov, all of these games that are made for that because it requires a super uh, powerful PC to run. It doesn't need, it's not one of these like standalone headsets where you know you can play ping pong or Beat Saber, but there are things, tri massive AAA, eight to 16 hour experiences, massive stories that will keep you engrossed for hours. And <laughs> so, you know, first time that one of those games came out, specifically Half-Life Alex, I think I was from, it came out about eight o'clock in the morning. I don't think I left until about maybe five o'clock at night and it was just because my brain switched off i was the character i was playing the main character and I mean, by the time i wasn't even finished like oh that's it. my brain's like what? i'm gonna be now i'm gonna be now trying to like fling items over to me with gravity you know all these things trying to shoot things i'm like what's happened <laughs> like and it just like adjusting to reality it's such a it's just a nuts thing virtual reality is just amazing sorry i, I get on really no. around when it comes to vr it is just interesting how it's come on because it was, it's sort of like, you know, years, even you go back a few years, it was sort of when they were sort of tinkering around with things. Where oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you had to think of where you could put like, your phone inside, like yeah, 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 goggles and stuff. Like that, and yeah. it was just sort of like, oh, this is where it's up to. And then it just seems to have gone massive. And sort of post pandemic, it seems to have gone massive as well. Oh, okay. That period seems to have given it a real time. For it's, it's, again, it's a massive thing for people who, again, might not be able to get outside or find it quite difficult, like agoraphobia or things like that. Because as massive, again, not talking about meta and all of that stuff that's going on at the minute, but even things like the Archer, just a big community of people that can go in and you just chat to people all over the world. It's just, it's a completely surreal experience being able to see, you not know, see someone, but see their avatar or whatever, but you're in the same room, you're participating mm -hmm. in the same thing, as opposed to being in what would have been 20 years ago, a chat room, a forum, or, you know, and it's just, it's just a surreal experience being able to connect to people in such a more intimate way, I guess. Just finally, uh, whereabouts are you? Uh, so you'll find Blink Arena um, at Riverside uh, Industrial Estate, just off the Pull Rose Bridge, uh, opposite the uh, the bowl with ample car parking space. 
And online, you can catch us at Blink.in, which you'll, uh, where you can see and check out all of our games, what we do, and booking with us. And you can check us out on Facebook as well at Blink Arena.